Yeah, so you know, we're, we're gonna spend a little bit more time on, um, on Nietzsche and permanence again this week. Again, mm. yeah, the, the, when the ubiquitous, you know, one of the three characteristics, one of those, one of those bits that the, the Buddha suggested again, you know, that's the one of the most important ones to look into, to pay attention to, that a lot can come from that. And there are so many angles on this. Um, we try to hold hold this up to the light in a few different ways, but apparently what we come back to is why, why, why focus on that? Why focus on that? What does that have to do with 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 my life? You know. And so I want to uh, speak about a couple of the ways that that, um, that that it's helped my life, supported my life, my quality, uh, the quality of my life. Yeah. Not at first. At first, it's cognitively, it's kind of, I get it cognitively, but why would I want to investigate it any further than that? Do you know? I understand that. Because we're more wired to make things solid and predictable as possible. We're wired that way. And um, it's kind of a miracle that we can do that, though, because from, in the, from the ultimate point of view, you know, in Buddhism, they talk about relative reality and absolute reality. Relative reality, yeah, things are kind of stable, but not really. And we're wired to make it stable. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to have this. We wouldn't be able to develop mental miracle. That sense that somehow we're wired to be able to see things kind of out of this, out of this, as they were saying, Buddhist psychology, out of this background of total flux and chaos, that we could actually organize and begin to see things as relatively stable, even though they're changing all the time, every second, relatively, relatively stable. Yeah. It's just that uh, then, uh, as part of it, we, we, we try to freeze frame our experience, you know, as if there are really are solid moments, as really as if there, we really could, you know, kind of stop the hands of time a little bit, a little bit, you know, except that we can't, you know, except in the bigger picture, we can't, you know, in the bigger picture, we can't. And I love that Heraclitus quote, which I'm sure you've, you've uh, the Greek, a quote that also captures as you can't step into the same river twice. You know, in the Buddhism, we would add to that. It's not even the same person twice, stepping into the same river twice. You know, it's all changing all the time. It's just we're constantly in motion, constantly in motion. Things again, both arising and passing away, arising and passing away you know, continuously. It's just that we're not, our mindfulness isn't strong enough to see that. And frankly, we're just not inclined to look in that direction. Uh, why? Because it's a little disarming. It's a little disorienting to look more, more carefully into it. You know, things are slip sliding away all the time. Uh, and at the same time, with this, what the Buddha is suggesting is that it's beginning to see that that can start to lead to a kind of freedom as well, you know, because um, things are continually changing, but we're all our, our nervous systems are also wired enough to, to be to continue to make sense of things as they're falling apart, as they're going over the waterfall. You know, it's not like we actually fall apart. You know, there is also a fear in there that if we don't control, if we don't stay, you know, managing and monitoring things, oh, what will happen if I take my hands off the wheel? And part of the practice is trusting that something good could actually happen if you take your hands off the wheel, you know, because it's changing anyway. It's changing anyway. The, 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 there's a, the illusion of control is all it is, yeah, when we try to freeze things freeze frame things. It's just the illusion of control. There is not, the control is not there. And that can be both scary and liberating. It can help us lighten up a little bit, right? It can help us lighten up a little bit. Yeah, and I, uh, when we think of enlightenment now, Susan and I, one of, certainly one of the things we think about 
is um, lightening up, lightening up. That is to say, squeezing our experience a little less tightly, you know, as if we could really hold on to it. You know, no, we can't. We can't. And it's like that. Um, the, the sense I have about impermanence is the more we dip into it, just see it, just see it, just see it, the organism starts to get the hang of it. You know, yeah, it's all changing all the time. It's always been true. It's true now. It's going to be true, you know? Isn't it? We're going to be taking, all of us are going to be taking the dirt nap soon enough, aren't we? It's changing in a big way, in the big way, in the biggest ways. And it's changing in all of the smaller ways all along the way, you know? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. And how do we make a relationship with that? No? And, and there are two things in particular that, I, that, I, that, have, that have supported me. First of all, the very difficult things are changing as well. The very challenging things are changing as well. Yeah, yeah. The, the difficult moods and mind states, the pains, you know, the physical pains, the, the, some, of the, some of the challenges, those are also moving through. Those don't stay around. And part of the practice is seeing, seeing that we can have more confidence to let things in and move through. You know, we don't have to get rid of them. They're going to get, they'll move, but they'll move through on their own. You know? Things will keep coming and going on their own. So we can make room gradually for a wider range of, of, our, of our experience. Mm -hmm. But the most important one um, for me, the, the, the greatest uh, assistance, you know, the, the way it's helped my quality of life mo most um, is through um, moving from the, 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 the fear and the, the kind of the anxiety and the, and, uh, the um, uncertainty that comes with things are constantly changing changing, changing, changing out of my control to um, the wonder of the, that, the pressure. The, the, in other words, going from, okay, then nothing matters. It's all falling apart anyway. What's the point? A slightly more nihilistic view to, no, 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 it's not that. It's that everything matters. It's that it all matters. It's, it's like, it doesn't get better than this. What, what, when am, when am I going to stop taking things for granted? If this can be better, what day? What day? What day is that going to be? You know, when I start to see that this moment, this moment, this moment, you know, more and more, seeing the preciousness, or the kissing, kissing the joy as it flies. When am I going to drop into that space? You heard me tell the story. I think maybe once here. Of the, a friend who's a, uh, a, a, a good friend of, of mine, who's the director of a hospice, who said he was really surprised to see that as people get closer to the end of life, the most common thing that they regret is not that they didn't do one more wild and crazy thing. That's usually second or third on the list. Yeah. But the first, is that they just didn't appreciate when things were going well in an ordinary way. I don't mean just the special experiences, this their everyday experience when they weren't in pain, when life was pretty good, when they were, there were blessings here and there, but they were so busy either planning for the future or regretting something in the past. that they didn't appreciate these moments, these ordinary moments of our lives. Do you know? Yeah. And so for me, the impermanence invites me into that, into that space more of, yes, it's, yes, yes, it's all slipping away. And how amazing it is as it's slipping away. We're not going to be here forever, but we're here now. You know, that ordinary sensibility, I mean, not said in that dramatic kind of a way, 
but starting to infuse that into my life more, more and more and more and more is part of what insight into impermanence, that's how it's affected positively the quality of my life. Something that Susan and I practice every day, remembering to remember that it doesn't get better than this. That's one of our mantras. Yeah, it's one of our mantras, yeah. 